Hello everyone, I'm going through a rather busy semester, but anyway, I wanted to show you this neat little project I've been taking care of. Now, this is an old late 2008 MacBook, and it is the first one that comes in an unibody uh, shell. You know, this is the first unibody MacBook. It runs a uh, Call to Duo at 2.0 GHz, actually, an NVIDIA 9400M uh, for graphics and 4 GB of RAM. And uh, I had this, lo this little guy laying around and it was completely useless because, you know, uh, it's rather slow for today's standards. It, it can run a browser, you can browse the web, but you can do much more with it. So guess what? I have installed Arch Linux on this machine. So let's just boot it up and let's take a look at my Arch Linux configuration for this machine. All right, we're now booted up into the system. It takes around 30 seconds to complete the boot process. And this is mainly due to the firmware taking a while to find a bootable partition. Maybe it looks for a Mac OS X partition first, and then after that it tries and boots any other available OS. I shall mention that the bootloader I chose is systemd boot, because it seems to work better than Grub with Mac's firmwares, and it is also easier to install and configure. Now, that said, this of course is Arch Linux, running i3wm, and I've already introduced this rather nice window manager on my channel. It's basically a tiling window manager, and the i3 gaps fork, which I'm using right now, also allows you to have gaps between windows. And I like the way they look. Uh, anyway, the first major difference from my previous video is the status bar down here. In fact, I'm not using the i3 status bar with Bumblebee status anymore. Uh, instead, I'm using Polybar, which is way more flexible and easier to customize. So here I have the date and the clock, uh, then I've got a volume module that shows me the master volume level, and I've also made so that it plays a sound when the volume is changed, just to have some feedback. Uh, then I have the battery module, which shows the battery percentage, and when on battery power also shows the remaining estimated time. And the battery actually lasts, I will say, a little more than 3 hours on moderate load, uh, which is not bad. Uh, the battery is new, but it is a compatible one I've found on Amazon. And lastly, I have a Wi-Fi module that tells me if I am connected to a Wi-Fi network and the download and upload speed. I use NMCLI to manage my Wi-Fi networks and it works very efficiently. On the right side I just have this module here that shows the title of the focused window and it is green just to give the bar some color and the whole theme is actually green. Green vibes, yay! <laughs> then I have the i3 module that shows me the current workspace. On the top here I have this sort of a system monitor uh, that shows the CPU memory usage, temperature, storage uh, and it is actually another polybar only this one is configured so that it goes under the maximized windows, so it works kind of like Conky, but in a more compact and simple way. Uh, terminal, still using UXVT, and my file manager of choice is still Nautilus, because uh, it looks nice and compact, and has a lot of functions I use, like easy web tab access. I use WebDub to transfer files with my iPhone and my iPad, and yeah, I still have an iPad as a tablet, I need to address that soon. And you can see I've changed the GTK3 window border settings a little bit so that no window buttons are shown to be consistent with the other apps. Uh, anyway, for the same reasons, I use Jedit as my graphical text editor, uh, even though I'm getting more familiar with Vim, which uh, I use for most of the text work now. Uh, I even have a live LaTeX preview support in Vim with Move PDF. And I use LaTeX a lot for university documents, I find it is way faster to work with than writing in Office. Uh, but I still have LibreOffice installed, by the way. And this brings us to my menu system. Uh, I switched to Rofi as my menu, it is way more customizable than the menu. 
and I have the DRAM mode as my default graphic window, which shows application names based on the .desktop file. I think it looks better than the run window, which just shows the bare commands. Uh, then mod plus tab opens Rofi in windows switcher mode which gives me a list of the open windows on all of the workspaces, very useful. And then mod plus shift plus D gives me a favorites list, while mod plus X gives me sort of a session menu uh, where you can shut down, reboot, etc. And those are actually scripts that pipe an echo command into my Rofi command so that I can have my very long Rofi command with all of the arguments I want for customizing the looks and then I can make it run whatever command I want. So we basically have a variable here to which the script uh, assigns a command and then it echoes the output of the command if you need that for debug and then it executes a command based on the value of the variable. And while I show you all of this stuff you can see that although FFmpeg is recording the screen, the system performs exceptionally good for a code to do. And everything works, brightness works, although due to the NVIDIA graphics card I had to tinker around a little bit. Uh, hibernation works, suspend works, even on lead close, which actually brings me to the lock screen. Uh, now I'm using i3 lock fancy to lock the screen and I've customized it a little bit uh, to show the logged username so that you know what password you need to type to unlock it. And I'm not gonna suspend the laptop now because it will break the video recording of course. Uh, but I've made so that the lock screen is automatically called from the suspense service uh, so that you can safely suspend the laptop. Uh, while to make hibernation work, you need a web partition, then you need to enable resume support on your INITRD and then configure the bootloader. Uh, sounds a little complicated, but trust me, it's not, and I can show you how it's done in another video if you want. Uh, I can show you how to achieve basically anything shown in this video if you want. So let me know if you like this video, uh, don't forget to subscribe for more Linux and tech stuff. I'm having a very busy and hard time at university, but this is very exciting stuff and knowing other guys that like it and inspiring them to build their own desktop environment just makes me happy. Oh and by the way, this setup is inspired from this guy on GitHub. So thank you Cesare Taki, don't know how to pronounce this nickname, uh, for sharing your configuration. I will link this GitHub repo in the video description of course. So I think that's pretty much it for today. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe and thank you for watching. See you guys.